From the eyes of a Minnesota brick historian, the Henry and Christina Gale farmhouse is a masterpiece. However, its days appear to be numbered. Back in 2006, it was named one of the Preservation Alliance of Minnesota's top 10 most endangered sites. I didn't come across this news until 2009. At that point, I visited the house site, which had been part of a family farm for over 100 years. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service had bought the farm and house and had built an interpretive center nearby. They were not sure what to do with the historically significant house. The house and farmstead complex sit along the west bank of the Minnesota River in Carver County, so the site is somewhat prone to flooding. A paved road was built from the bluffs down to the interpretive center and house below. It is very easy to see the house when driving down this paved road, especially in the months when the leaves are off the trees. Since the house hasn't been used in a number of years, it was boarded up. However, visitors could walk around the outside of the house to observe it up close. This schematic shows a top-down representation of the house, with the north side labeled with the letter N. The first thing you notice is just how close the house is to the Minnesota River, essentially just feet away from the riverbank. The main house extended east to west and had three chimneys. An L was built off the main house to the north, which also had a chimney. An L is an attached wing built perpendicular to the main portion of the house. Covered porches were built on either side of the L, which was likely the kitchen. One of the most interesting aspects of the site was the outhouse. Why? Because it was built right into the riverbank. At the time the outhouse was built, people had very little idea that they polluted the very water they drank. Both the house and the outhouse were built of cream-colored brick. This west-facing photo shows the main house and L. From the south, this photo shows five windows across the second story, as well as the main entrance. I can imagine someone sitting on the front steps and watching a steamboat pass by on the river. Finally, this north-facing photo shows where the basement level and first floor unite. This provided a few extra feet of height in case of an exceptionally high flood. This was the L section with the two covered porches on either side. The nearby outhouse was also a cute little building with a door and one window on either side. The history of the house and property start with Henry Gale and Christina Sones. Henry was born in Germany in 1825, as was Christina, who was born in 1832. Henry came to America in 1845, and Christina came in 1853. Both were around 20 years old, and both came to Minnesota. The couple married at Shakopee, about 25 miles southwest of St. Paul, on July 21, 1854. After their marriage, the couple settled on the shores of Lake Calhoun, which was just southwest of Minneapolis. On June 16, 1856, when Franklin Pierce was the President of the United States, Henry registered a land claim at Red Wing, Minnesota. This piece of land was the northwest quarter of Section 7 in Township 115 North and Range 23 West. This piece of land was located near Chaska and Carver, in Carver County, Minnesota. His brother-in-law, Henry Sones, homesteaded the adjacent parcel of land. However, there were not a lot of people in Minnesota in 1856. The 1857 Minnesota Census showed Chaska had about 152 people, Minneapolis about 1,000, and St. Paul around 10,000. If a person wanted to make money, St. Paul was the spot. At the time, St. Paul had started up a market house, which was a common location where farmers could bring their goods to sell to the citizens. 
This market was located in a brick building on the northwest corner of Wabasha and 8th Streets. This 1867 lithograph of St. Paul prominently showed the state capitol. The market building was located just a couple blocks to the south. The 1857 St. Paul directory showed that Henry Gale operated a stand at the market. The 1857 Minnesota census also listed Henry as a butcher in St. Paul. The 1860 census listed Henry as a farmer in Rose Township, just northwest of St. Paul. Henry's personal wealth was shown to be about 4,600, which was fairly wealthy for the time. Around 1862, the family moved to San Francisco, California, which was still booming from the gold rush days. There, the family drove cattle to the city to supply the masses with meat. Sometime after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, the family moved back to Minnesota. Henry carried $4,000 worth of gold the entire way. Back in Minnesota, Henry picked up where he had left off, this time managing the Boston Meat Market in St. Paul. That didn't last too long, however, as somewhere around 1867 or 1868, Henry sold his butcher shop in St. Paul for another piece of land in Carver County, Minnesota. This land was located in Section 6 of San Francisco Township and Section 31 of Carver Township, right along the Minnesota River. This area had some interesting geographical features. The first was the Carver Rapids on the Minnesota River. At lower water levels, a series of rocks were visible in the river, which prevented boats from passing upstream. Secondly, the land was within the Minnesota River Valley. Looking at the area within this red box on a topographical map, the terrain becomes easier to visualize. The farm location is circled in black at an elevation of about 720 feet. The red areas on either side represent an elevation of around 900 feet. At the lowest point in the valley, the Minnesota River flowed past the farm from the southwest to the northeast. When the river flooded, it spilled over its banks into the adjacent lowlands, sometimes becoming up to a half mile or so wide. These floods threatened the farm, as well as the nearby communities of Carver and Chaska. However, the Gale Farm, shown within this red rectangle, was actually surprisingly high, even though it was right next to the river. Zooming in on this area, on the topographical map, the high terrain on the west side of the farm was about 835 feet high. The farm buildings, located next to the river, were at an elevation of about 720 feet. So there was a quick elevation drop of about 100 feet over a very short distance. According to the 1870 census, the Gale family lived on their San Francisco Township farm, and Henry was listed as a farmer. Henry's personal wealth had shot up to $13,000, almost three times what it had been on the 1860 census. He was living the American dream. In 1871, Henry bought a building and lot in the town of Carver for a butcher shop. In 1872, he hired Charles Bachman to move the old building and put up a new brick one in its place. This butcher shop was located near the southwest corner of Broadway and 3rd Street, as shown by this 1894 Sanborn map. The 1874 Patrons Directory of the Andreas Atlas of Minnesota listed the Henry Gale family as residents of Carver as did the 1875 Minnesota census. In 1875, Henry opened up a second butcher shop in Chaska, near the corner of Pine and Second Streets, as shown by this 1885 Sanborn map. So now Henry owned his farm and had butcher shops in both Carver and Chaska. The 1880 U.S. Census again listed Henry as a farmer in San Francisco Township. In 1884, he had a large frame barn built on a stone foundation on his farm. In subsequent years, he added on to this barn. 
The 1885 Minnesota census continued to list Henry as a farmer in San Francisco Township. This photograph, likely taken sometime around 1885, shows Henry and Christina Gale and some of their children. In 1887, Henry and Christina decided to build a beautiful new brick home at their farm to enjoy their golden years. The farmers throughout Carver County built a large number of brick homes in the late 1800s. Many of these farmhouses were two to two and a half stories in height and featured L's. Bricks were hauled to the house site in San Francisco Township during the winter of 1887-1888. The bricks were likely Carver bricks, made at the Andrew Allen Brickyard south of Carver. This brickyard was only about two miles from the Gale Farm. The original Carver County Courthouse took about 575,000 bricks to complete. I would estimate the Gale House could have used about 300,000. Being winter, the bricks would have been hauled by teams and sleighs, much like this photo shows. No, that's not a ghost. The dog just refused to hold still for the picture. This palette shows what 1,000 bricks looked like. If each sleigh could hold 2,000 bricks, it would have required 150 sleigh loads to transport the required number of bricks. The man chosen to build the house in 1888 was Charles Bachman, shown on the right, and his two sons, Robert and Edward. Charles had also built Henry's Carver Brick Butcher Shop back in 1872. Charles was also hired to build the addition to the Carver County Courthouse in Chaska in 1885. The Henry and Christina Gale house was a two and a half story farmhouse. It had a basement, large kitchen, pantry and milk room, front and rear parlors, study, dining room, and four bedrooms. Henry was only able to enjoy his new house for about two years, as he died in 1890. Christina would later move to Chaska, where she died in 1905. Henry and Christina Gale had 14 children, although not all survived beyond infancy. The operation of the farm turned to the first six boys, the first being Henry Jr. Not much is known about this son, but he was not living with the family when his father died. The next son was Charles A., who was an entrepreneur. At the age of 14, he had started a meat market in Chaska. He drove a load of meat from the farm into town every morning, returning in the afternoon to help with chores. By 1887, Charles had his own meat delivery wagon, driving around Chaska every morning. When his father died in 1890, Charles would have been 32 years old. However, Charles was well established on his own and didn't want the family farm. The third son was Aaron Reich, who died in 1888, two years before his father. Fred was the fourth son. However, in conjunction with Charles, Fred had moved to Excelsior, Minnesota to run a butcher shop there. The next son was George, who had died in 1879. Francis was the sixth son who was 23 years old when his father died in 1890. Francis took over the ownership of the Gale House and the 640-acre farm. Francis was known as a hard worker and a great hustler. This 1898 plat map of Carver County showed the farmhouse location and the land managed by Francis Gale. His ownership ended in 1901 when he was struck and killed by a train. Herman was the next son. When Francis was killed in 1901, Herman was 27 years old, and he became the third owner of the farm. Herman was also known as a good worker and businessman. The farm had grown to include 40 horses, 100 cattle, and 200 hogs. This 1916 plat map showed the land owned by Herman Gale. Herman passed away in 1917 at a fairly young age. This forced Charles to take over the ownership of the family farm. 
1917, Charles was 44 years old. He became the fourth owner of the property. In the preceding years, Charles had done very well for himself. He had built a new Chaska Brick butcher shop in 1900, which still stands on West 2nd Street. In addition, he owned several large parcels of land on the northwest outskirts of Chaska. This 1926 plat map of Carver County shows the original Gale Farm with at least one new parcel that Charles had purchased. Charles ran the original farm with the help of his two sons and hired help. Charles died in 1934. Charles had married Anna Schwee in 1891, and his two living sons in 1934 were Henry W. and Charles F. Being the oldest son, Henry was the next in line. When his father died in 1934, Henry was 41 years old. Henry became owner number five. When Henry took over the farm, they were still raising a variety of livestock, but mainly turkeys and cattle. This 1936 photo shows a number of men harvesting wheat on the Gale farm, using a combination of horsepower and steam. This 1937 satellite image shows the Gale farmhouse, among many other farm buildings. Although Henry focused on turkeys, as this photo shows, they raised chickens and ducks as well. In 1944, Henry sold off his Holstein dairy herd to focus on turkey production. That year, 30,000 turkeys were raised on the Gale farm. Henry died in 1949. Although married, Henry had no children. Next in line was Henry's sister, Florence. When Henry died in 1949, Florence was 49 years old. Florence became owner number six. Florence operated the Chaska Meat Market and the farm with her husband, Walter F. Middlestead. Walter died in 1959 and Florence maintained ownership until 1965. Florence died in 1974. Florence and Walter had two children, but Gail was the oldest and was also a son. In 1965, Gail was 44 years old and became owner number seven. Gail W. Middlestead was a veterinarian in Chaska, but he operated the farm with his two sons. This 1979 satellite image shows the original farmhouse as well as the entire farm complex. The image also appears to show a barn and silo just south of the farmhouse. Other than a few circular clay blocks, there is nothing left of this silo today. These blocks look very much like those that were made in Springfield, Minnesota and used in ACO silos. Gail Middlestead died in 1983. Gail was married, and his wife and children inherited the farm, becoming owners number eight. The family sold the farm to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 1995. The land became part of the National Wildlife Refuge System. Most of the farm buildings were raised, although the original farmhouse was kept and was considered for reuse. The blue square shows where the main farm complex once stood. However, the Fish and Wildlife Service built an interpretive center just to the west of the main farmhouse, outside the floodplain. The Fish and Wildlife Service has a policy that no structures can be built or maintained in a floodplain. That pretty much sealed the fate of the Henry and Christina Gale farmhouse. I hope you enjoyed this video about the Gale family and their historic farmhouse. Stay tuned for part two for a walk around of the Gale Farm site in 2022. That concludes the video. Please check out my websites at mnbricks.com and chaskabrick.com.